Right, and good afternoon everyone and thank you very much uh, to John. Just to introduce myself, um, I'm Alison Barraclough, I'm Principal Moderator for, um, for Edexcel Spec A uh, Controlled Assessment. I'm very, very pleased to welcome you to this afternoon's session. Um, I'd be very grateful if you could start off by filling in the second poll, um, which, is conf which is the one about how to um, or about how long you've been delivering the specification, etc., which I hope is available. I can see it. Um, Jordan, is that available to the delegates to see, please? Um, thank you. All right, yes, uh, Jordan, if I could have that poll, um, please. Where you're st that's poll number, um, uh, poll one in my, my counting. Um, how long have you been doing things? Thank you. I hope, has that come up? Sorry, everyone. I'm just waiting to see if that poll is coming up for you. Poll one is up. Thank you very much. Um, that's brilliant. So, yes, I've got it up now. Thank you. Question one. Uh, some people brand new to this. Uh, Thank you. Some people have been teaching it for a couple of years and some people have been teaching for a considerable period of time. Welcome to those who are new to the delivery. We'll do our very best to help you with the standardization today. Um, if we could have the second question up, please, Jordan, that would be very helpful. I think we're up pretty well there on that. Thank you. And the vast majority of you have obviously some experience. It's coming round about 80% of you have already entered people for controlled assessment. Obviously, um, consequently, uh, again, I will do my best to help you to understand the standardization procedure a little bit better and um, ways of improving the controlled assessment. 20% of you, I'll do my very best to help you a little bit more than that, perhaps, especially if it's your first attempt at doing this. Thank you. Um, if we could go on to the next question, please. Thank you. So this is, did you get what you expected? Uh, a few people still voting on that. Right, and roughly three quarters, thank you, um, roughly three quarters of you was happy, but obviously a rather sizable minority thought that their candidates, their students should have done better. Well, hopefully again today I can go through and we can sort out um, reasons why perhaps that has happened and help you. Um, if I could have the next question, please, Jordan. And we've just got one person, I think, to pop up for me, and then I've got an answer. We've got, seem to have an overwhelming number of you wanting to, do, or intending to do coasts, tourism, and rivers. Um, one settlement, one environmental. Um, somebody's not doing either. We've already done it, right? And we'll be linear in two years' time. Environmental quality, one person, two in for the environmental quality. And no, oh, and recycling the sustainability one, just one of you. Thank you. Um, that's really helpful to me, actually, again, for addressing things for today. Uh, if we could have the next question, please. Well, those of you that I can see, thank you. Um, uh, that's an interesting one uh, from somebody. Um, think that the goalposts appear to have changed. I sincerely hope they haven't. So that's uh, that is such a little bit of a concern to me that two of you think that because was it inset as a matter of interest that I took you through? Because I can quite assure you that the goalposts have remained constant. Ah, okay. Thank you, Amber. 
Right, okay, that's that's actually quite helpful. Thank you very much for that. Um, yes, improving grades seems to be quite an important issue. We'll do our best to show you how to get those grades as high as possible. Those of you who are first time teaching this also, or leading, um, and I do have things to say about the linear qualification, which I hope will be useful as well. Okay, so I think the very last question, and then we'll get going, if you could just pop that up for me, Jordan, and then we'll get there get going on helping you improve those grades. I think I probably know the answer is to improve grades, um, but just clarify it for me if you would. <laughs> That's exactly what I thought you were going to say. Yeah, everybody wants to improve grades. If that's what you want, that's that's yeah, yeah, make sure we're getting the best grades. And we and quick tips, yeah. Yeah, so moderation obviously is very important. Marking criteria more effectively, yeah, indeed. And Barry. Interested what you want to say. That's Lima. Yeah, indeed. And so let's get these grades working with these grades. Why the interpretation appears to have changed. Okay, um, Barry, I'll do my very best remembering that I didn't give any advice that you might have already had. Um, thank you very much. Jordan, if we could clear that window now, and I will start using my um, using my slides. Right, everyone. Well, really, the purpose of standardisation. First of all, it's really important that your schools carry out standardisation. Um, obviously, it's very significant if there's more than one of you teaching uh, the, uh, the controlled assessment that you agree on a common mark um, criteria. Basically, as I understand it. There are the three levels to getting this or to achieving this. So first of all, it's important to get together before you actually even carry out anything to do with the controlled assessment and make sure that the task that you've selected and the location, well, the task is suitable for the location, the location is suitable for the task, um, to achieve all the actual criteria because some locations work better than others. And I think that's really, really worth knowing. Obviously, if you're going to a field study centre, it's, I think it's well worth phoning through and having a very, very long talk with them before you go and ensuring that, first of all, they know what you want to do, and secondly, that the location that they are planning to take you to um, answers all the questions. We have had a couple of issues where um, that hasn't quite happened. Please make sure that you are doing the correct task for the year of submission. Very essential. Having done that, having carried everything out, each teacher independently usually marks the completed work for their teaching group. And then we come to something which is really important. Um, also at school, obviously under secure conditions because you're then handling what is in essence examination material, you meet to standardize the meet, they work across your teaching group. What I suggest and what I do is each teacher reviews the marking round about the previous year's grade boundaries, and the grade boundaries for the controlled assessment are, are, are pretty constant. So the grade boundaries, basically um, A38, B34, C31, etc. Um, so although the guidelines only, they have remained constant for the last two or three years, and I can't assure you, of course, that they will continuously remain constant, but that is obviously um, a thing to be working at. So what I usually do is that we mark at three or four pieces of work as near to the grade boundaries as possible um, for each teacher. So if you've got three teachers, you might be marking each other's at their grade boundaries, say two lots of their grade Bs, two lots of their grade Cs, just to see if you're agreeing with them. Obviously, if you're not, if there is a difference, well then, um, you do need to obviously go back and review the marking, particularly if somebody's been too harsh, somebody being 
a little bit too generous. What we frequently find when we come to standardize is that the lower, the lower grades are quite often marked a little bit too harshly. And that's, I think, something to bear in mind. Once we've done that, everything comes to us, or at least your sample comes to us, which is selected by Edexcel. Um, and then we have a standardization meeting. Uh, I've just put up the general idea. It's of what each examiner must mark consistently over a period of time to the marking period and constantly with all the other examiners involved. So we do try as far as humanly possible to ensure complete consistency. Uh, cons can't use the wrong word, isn't it? But um, everybody's consistent. No, it is consistency across the team of markers. A very important point. Standardization, in our case in particular, doesn't mean remarking. We agree with you unless there is strong evidence that we shouldn't. So we check each center's marking conforms to nationally agreed standards. We're marking as told to by Ofqual, basically. And then we give feedback consisting of a report to each center. And I've worked hard with my teams this year to try and make sure that the reports to you are as helpful as possible. Um, OK, so I'll, t I'll look at questions in a minute, if you don't mind. I know a couple have popped up, but I will look at questions in a minute when we've gone through this section. Right, so basically, um, this is 2013 here. So this is, as is, the format for the marking is unchanged from the 2013 submission. Um, it doesn't alter from this year. Eight task titles as in previous years. So if I just pop those up for you, I know a lot of you know them already. Um, if you could now just let me know, or you've already have, haven't you? But um, just ref refresh my memory which ones you're doing, if you don't mind. Yes, it's interesting that transport and country as usual, I'm afraid, nothing. Urban areas is well down. You obviously are not quite as keen on my urban areas question this time. Thank you. That's, um, that's very interesting and very helpful. So if I pop that one away. Uh, thank you. That one can go. Um, Jordan, if you didn't mind losing that for me. I wanted to go back to the PowerPoint, please. Thank you. That's great. OK, then, so most teachers know what they want to do. It's really, really helpful if the task question is broken down into three or four smaller questions that are clearly linked to the main task question. And this is sometimes where things go a little bit slightly off key for, for students. So a simple focus sub-question is usually really helpful um, to your candidates, to your students in breaking things down. And I've got an example for you. Um, so for the 2013 task, why is your chosen location attractive to tourists? A lot of you I noticed are doing the tourist task. Um, it can be broken down into things such as Keswick is attractive because of the surrounding physical environment. It's attractive because of the shops and other human services, attractions, facilities. Is easily accessible. And there are three key ideas. It is, but they clearly link to the task question. But they make that task question actually much more accessible to the candidates, to the students. So they can see each of those as nice stages, which will build onto their actual um, overall task. In each case, they should explain why they think the main sub-question will help them answer the main task question. So why they think each of these little sub-questions will lead into a really good answer. Right, um, I'm just going to go on with this, and then we'll, I'll have a quick look at some questions for you. Um, it's important that the proposed data collection sites are clearly, clearly located. So students can use GIS to get maps at a range of scale. Aerial photographs are absolutely brilliant as well. Now, to get through this bit, and this is a section which quite often um, 
we found centers don't fully understand. So um, to get the high level, the high mark range, establishing the location, you, they need to show the actual data collection sites, the proposed data collection sites, either on a map or by giving a six-figure grid reference to each data collection site or both. And that's something which I think is quite clearly often missing. Um, so that needs to be worked. That's something which I feel could be really worked on. Um, maps, very important, and photographs, aerial photographs, if you're using them, should have titles, scales, north arrows, and keys. OK. Right, so um, I'll just have a quick look at the questions, because I do have two. Um, Julia, I think I've answered, and apologies, it is John Wolfson, and I did type that incorrectly. And I'll talk about John in just a moment. I'm sure some of you know John. Um, right. Um, I will come to on to Julia, if I may ever come on to your other question in a little bit of time, because um, I think that's going to be something about the 214, not so much about the 213, because although there's an advised word limit for the 213, to be honest with you, it's not very strictly enforced. However, for 2014, there's going to be a much stricter enforcement on the word limit. I do have a lot of advice, so if you could just bear with me on that one, um, we will certainly look at that. Um, before I ask you to have a go, bearing in mind that we've got, we're looking at the key aims of the purpose of the investigation are to actually ensure that they've broken down as much as possible the task question into these sub-questions, to clearly locate their, um, their ideas, to clearly locate their proposed data studies, and to um, really be focused on the task itself uh, to justify why they're answering the, uh, why they're choosing those sub questions are there any other general questions before I go on or questions about the purpose of the investigation in that case Jordan if you'd be kind enough to bring up the purpose of the investigation for me Right, now I'm afraid this is a little bit lengthy. What we've got is a piece of work um, which is, has been made anonymous, so you're not going to, it is actually a, um, a piece of submitted work. What I'd like you to do is, bearing in mind what I've just said, and with the mark scheme available below that, I'm going to tell you what was given by the centre and the moderator which was full marks for this section. I'd like you to not spend too long because you're moderating, i.e. you're not remarking, but I'd like to go, you to go through that. And I'd like you to decide, please, whether you agree with the moderator's mark, which, as I just told you, is the highest possible one, um, moderator awarding quite a lot, and I will justify that to you in a moment, but the moderator of um, awarding six out of six for this section, and the, of course, Central also doing that. Um, but if you could just skim through that and decide whether you agree that this is a good piece of work, and then we can talk about why it's a good piece of work. So if I give you, say, four or five minutes, and then once I've got some yes and no's in, um, I'll come back and start talking it through. Thank you. Uh, Jordan, if you could let them have control, that would be fantastic. Thank you. So Jordan's now making it so that you can actually move uh, the, the candidates, the students' work up and down, and also the mark scheme, just to remind yourselves of that. Julia, I'll come back when we... I, I will have to come see your question. Thank you. Once we've got quite a few yeses or noes up, I will come back and I can discuss that with you. 
Thank you. Oh, don't worry about type errors. I do it all the time. Uh, no, Jeff, there is. Oh, um, what the actual? Um, I don't know whether. Presumably, yes, because I submitted it. So there should be a copy of that. Yes, imagine. And Barry, yes, we'll talk about that in a moment. Thank you. Can I ask John and Amber to put what they think? James has just given it a mark. Oh, the mark was six. Um, and Amber, yes, I know what you're saying. Um, but if Amber and John, you'd be kind enough to say what you'd give it, if it wouldn't be. Thank you, Amber. And John, we're giving it fives. Okay. So we're not far off if we're going for five. A lot of you doing that. Application. Is, is there more than purpose? Thank you, Paddy. OK, I'll just give you a tiny bit longer, because I want to explain or try and justify why we why the moderator <coughs> did not change the center's mark and left it at six in a moment. Um, Laura, possibly, can we again, I'll be explaining in just a moment to you. I agree. Salima, I hope I've said your name correctly. But again, I'll talk about that. So we're up to 19 on our votes. If we could just have the last couple of people, please, who haven't voted. There's two of you left, I think. You could just vote for me. Thank you. And just last person, I think, to vote. OK, I think probably anybody still to vote, I'm going to stop us at that point because there we are, so everybody can see what everybody else thought. Um, right, right. the reason it wasn't changed. Um, so the, the candidate student does subdivide the, t the um, task questions into three hypotheses or three mini questions on page four. However, and this is where it was a little bit of a tricky one. It was, this is where you have to remember to look beyond the initial introduction. Um, once you get to pages 8 to 15, the sub-questions are further broken down into additional questions. For example, the environment differs because the age of the houses is extended to include house type, the stage of repair of the gardens, the front gardens, the off-street parking provision, road width and vegetative um, externalities on pages um, 8 to 11. So they actually go on and justify things a lot more a bit further on. So they actually did, and they said a lot more than that further on as well. So we, we felt that that was worth keeping them in Mark Range 3. I agree with what you said about the location. A couple of you mentioned that you didn't think it was totally located as well as it should be. But, and this is a long piece of work, um, once you get to page 45, horrifically long, they actually show the data collection streets. And therefore, we, because they focus themselves on the sites, the streets, we kept them up in um, mark, the top of the mark and went with the center on six here. You may or may not think that was generous. Um, I think a lot of you have gone for five. Um, yeah, they possibly had been told to include things. Thank you, Phil. Should the purpose use the um, go to Laura's question? Should the pupils use the purpose to explain the four club questions, linking to the main question? Yes, is the answer to that, Laura. They should actually, if possible, say how those sub questions are going to help them understand the main question. Um, there is a little bit in the purpose of the. Um, investigation mark scheme, which says evaluate the question or issue, which, to be honest with you, teachers don't understand. Certainly, pupils don't understand. So, if there's any explanation, almost evaluation of their sub questions, how effective they are in answering, they think they're going to be in answering the sub question, the, the main task question, we accept that. 
Okay. Um, so, yes, we found that. Are there any other comments? So, remember, again, we're moderating. The center has said six. By going a little bit through the document, probably past where you went, there is evidence that they could have got six. Five, well, yes, probably might have gone to five, but there's still certain evidence there that it's good enough for six. We've got sub-questions. We've got some justification. We've got development. We've got certain amounts. It's a bit weak, but we've got certain amounts of, of linkage and justification. We've got some slides. I'm happy to leave that on the full marks. So, it, no, in answer to Phil's question, if a candidate includes aspects of work in Section A for another section, it doesn't matter. Obviously, it's better. It's better for you, marking it. It's better for us, moderating it, if everything is nice and tight within their first sections. But you don't penalize them if they put the sites in the method, if you see what I mean. Um, uh, we shouldn't, and no, Phil, I wouldn't penalise them in Section F for that either, because if that's, that's something which we could do easily. I think we'll still, I'll talk about Section F in the moment, but I wouldn't be penalising them in Section F for doing that. I think that's a legitimate use of maps to have the sites in the method if they haven't put them in the purpose of the investigation. Ideally in the purpose, though. I'll just wait for Amber's question. Um, if they put the sites on located graphs on the map, Amber, I would accept that as well as actually showing where the data have been collected. Okay, thank you. Um, Jordan, if we could go back to the PowerPoint, please, for a moment. Okay, so we've come to a consensus of between five and six, and I said it was awarded six. If we just go on to the data collection, because say, I want to have time to talk about 2014, I'm sure you've got a lot to ask me on that. Um, now, the data collection should include a range of data collection methods. Some centers have taken to piloting their data collection, especially the questionnaires. I mean, that's a really good idea uh, because then they know if it's going to work or not. It doesn't have to be going home questionnaires. You can do it in the classroom and check they work. Um, the students must, and this is, where, again, another very contentious point. Students must describe exactly how, when, and where they collected each data set. Sampling techniques may be important, depending on the type of data collected. So, for example, if they are doing a transect up a beach, um, systematic sampling might be important, and that would be a technique to teach them. They, students need to explain why the data collection method helps them answer the task question. Why it's a relevant method. Why is it a relevant method to collect the data they want, basically? Most centers I know use tables for this section. And this is definitely something you're going to be wanting to do for 2014. Um, but at the moment, it's a little bit restricting. And there is still a subtle difference between 2013, when we're advising a word limit, and 2014, when we're putting a word limit into place. So at the moment, um, certainly for the very bright students, candidates, that is actually proving a little bit of a limitation. In the future, it won't be. Uh, now, this is terribly important. A lot of centers have three or four columns in their table. And the last table is quite often headed up problems and solutions. Uh, that's a little bit of a worry, because we hope very much that your students, if they're using these tables, are not actually um, going in and doing the evaluation as they fill in that table, describing how they collected the data. Because obviously, describing how they collected the data, the data collection is carried out under low level of control, and written about under low level of control. 
any problems, evaluation of their data collection is high level of control and counts as evaluation. So it's absolutely fine to have a table with that section problems, evaluation of the data collection, but it should be left completely blank until the high level of control is reached. And at the moment, we don't know whether that's happening or not. And what I would like, if possible, is for the table to be dated and then that evaluative column, justification, to be dated so that we know it's actually happened later in the sequence. Uh, I know it's a little bit of an ask, but obviously it is a requirement that this section is carried out under the high level of control. Can it be a sketch map? I presume that's with locating your information. Yes, it can. Uh, do you want sub-questions and hypotheses? No. Um, I basically don't like the use of the word hypotheses. We've had a long discussion about this, Jennifer. Um, going back to the previous, the purpose of the investigation, hypotheses should really be null hypotheses. And we don't do that. Nobody does that. So really, we're breaking the task question down into sub-questions. It's just been a little bit more technically correct. So no, we do not want hypotheses. We just break it down into sub-questions. Um, Julia. All right, we've already done 2004-13. I will be on to that. I don't, don't worry. Do the questions. Will the, do the pupils have to explain how the four sub-questions um, help explain the main hypothesis to get five marks for 2013? Yes, they do. Um, they would do that in the purpose of the investigation, Laura. So that's going back to the previous section again, just to clarify matters. Um, sound breaking up. We were OK, Karen, is it OK now? I hope so. Um, right. A bit because I think that's everybody. Thank you, Karen. Um, it's a little bit boring on my control occasionally. I'm trying hard not to do, not to lose you. Don't want to lose you. Right, okay. Right, so, um, moving forward, an example of data collection coming up again. It's the same candidate, so again, apologies, it is a lengthy document. Obviously, there would be a penalty on a document of this length at um, 2014. There isn't at the moment. It's an advisory length. Um, I wondered if I could have the data collection section up, please, uh, George, and, and if you could give everybody control, because you might want to scroll down a fair amount. I will give you the mark that the center awarded um, and the one that was left at moderation. Um, if you remember the data collection is out of nine. Uh, this was given nine. So I'd like you to do what you did previously, if you would, please. And that's go through the, um, the data collection. Decide whether it's worth full marks. Again, you have the mark scheme to remind you down the bottom. And if you could, in about five minutes or so, do a vote, that would be really helpful. Thank you. Some people have already agreed with it. That was quick. You're quicker than me. I need you on my moderating team. Right. Um, Paddy says he hasn't got the whole page option, um, Jordan, so it's very difficult to read. Is there any way he can click on full screen, please? Um, or to, yeah, thank you very much, Jordan. Jordan also says, um, if you need, if you click Zoom, you should be able to see it better. Uh, Graham, that's a good point. I'll talk about that in a moment. Thank you. Right, yes, I'll come on to some of the comments that are coming up. Thank you. Um, if, and I know somebody doesn't think it's worth full marks, if you could just, it is detail, Kate. Thank you. No, you don't need as much. Uh, I probably would agree with that as well. I, I Please don't do the data presentation yet. We're just looking at the data collection methods. 
So don't yet. Yeah, I mean, you, you're, you're jumping ahead on me for just a little bit. Some of you, you're looking at the graphs. We're really, really um, going past the data collection. If we're starting to look at graphs. I agree with you, Amber. <laughs> no, they haven't, Amber. <laughs> OK, we're pretty well there. We've got 15 people all thinking it's worth full mark. 16 now, thank you. No, this, I agree with you. I I would have, hear me, sorry, my microphone just dropped down there. Um, my candidates wouldn't write as much as this. Uh, OK. Do, I'll just, just give you some comments that I've jotted down. They do provide detailed description of the methods used to get data. So they definitely go through mark ranges one and two, and they meet mark range three. The methods are described in detail. For example, on page nine, the student describes the method used to investigate the house type. They looked and rated the houses on the opposite side of the street at a 40 degree angle, so not to look at directly at any of the houses. Not quite sure why, but never mind. But they gave quite a lot of detail. Um, they got mark range three. It's well linked to the mini hypotheses. In other words, it's relevant stuff they were getting, and therefore consequently also linked to the main calves question. They do include a massive amount of primary data, the table 16 to 23, um, to show they actually did collect the data. Probably didn't need to have all that included. I mean, it's not necessary to have that volume of data to prove they collected data. The summary table, which they actually give on page 34, would have been enough um, to have actually given the the idea that the evidence is appropriate for the investigation. They actually give detailed explanation of the methods used to collect the data and statements to emphasize the reasons for each data collection method. So for example, um, they repeat it. The environment differs because the level of access to, of, level of access to green space. So they can see how what they're collecting links to the mini hypotheses, their sub hypotheses. Well, so shouldn't use that word. Their sub questions. So again, they actually exceeded mark range one and two, and is worthy of mark range three. There's detailed explanation. Um, far too long, I thought, and I agree with the people who were querying: Was this possible to achieve in three hours class time? Probably not. Um, remember, at the moment, again, they are guidelines. Uh, I'll come back to the way can you do it at home in a second. Um, but they are guidelines. We, that's what we encourage centers to do. There is no way of knowing whether that has been implemented. It could be that this was a super able candidate who could type incredibly quickly. Um, maybe not. Uh, how many methods is a range? Right, I'm coming to questions now. So we've, we've, we've agreed it's, it's nine. Well, won't worry about the data presentation. i um, got question marks over whether it's three hours work. Um, I'll go to Sandra's point, three hours class time. They're allowed to do it at home, aren't they? We'd rather they didn't. Um, Certainly going to come in, and again, I'll talk about this in a bit more detail in a moment. For 2014, you're going to find that a few changes, um, and we'll be asking you not to do that. If I take Amber's point, next time one down, regards to the table on page 310 in tomorrow's geography is a data collection set as the table with an evaluation com comment. The candidate there hasn't found it restricted. They don't, and in some cases, I'm just saying, this year, in particular, I did have what I thought were cut-off points where the candidates almost were scared to go beyond what they considered the bounds of a table. And I think they were getting, it was a little bit self-penalizing for some of them because they didn't um, actually ex describe their data collection in enough detail and held themselves back in level mark range two when they could have been in three. It's just a comment. I think that table 
um, data collection tables are fantastic. And I think you're all going to be using them in 2014. But, but make sure that there's enough information. Um, it's very advanced for a GCSE candidate with a time scale. It, it's pretty good stuff, I agree with you. How many methods is a range? I think that's going to be talking about data presentations, so we'll we'll do that in a minute. And though Amber, that isn't what they have to do. This is um, it's about exactly Barry. It's back to the old coursework ideas, which is why one reason why I wanted it. Um, we're not talking about data presentation yet, so let's do that in a moment. Um, Right, OK, I'll talk, Amber, about low-level work can be done at home at the moment. It can. Come 14, it can't. So we're trying to start moving people away from that idea. Um, and you were told that definitely last training by Steph Barry. Yes, so I'm not going to try and go back on what you've already been told, but I will be advising you that things are changing when we start talking about 2014. Um, and asking or banning. So at the moment, Julia, it is a. We would rather it wasn't happening at home. In 2000, that's for 2013. For 2014, we're going to be saying it's not happening at home. Um, yeah, I'm sorry about this, Barry, but this is the new specification coming in. Um, methods are at high level of control. The spec says they can go be done at home. The new spec doesn't. Uh, I'm sure the broad literature does for 2013, yes, but for 2014, no. Um, so I'm afraid it's changed because we've been told to change them. It's apologies all round. Um, I'll just wait for Kate okay, and Graham's questions there, and then we'll move on and talk about data presentation. And I do apologize, and I do realize that the new specification is going to make quite an impact, because your teaching requirements are going up, and on top of that, you're going to have to squeeze this in. And I apologize, but there's nothing I can do about it. Um, but with a river investigation, how many methods of data collection would be needed? Um, it would depend on the task question, Kate, for two, um, to be some extent. But obviously, you will need to have probably three variables. But I could talk for this year, three, three sub-questions, possibly four. For 2014, probably two sub-questions would suffice. Um, for level three, handing in rough work. Not normally. Oh, sorry, data collected on the day. Yeah, um, Graham, you can put that in the appendix at the back, and that counts as the data relevant for the um, for the, the actual task. So that's absolutely fine. Okay. Um, it's a bit tough, isn't it? I do realise that. Jordan, could I have my PowerPoint back, please? Because I really want to spend some time on this data presentation because it's another issue. Right, so I think we're reasonably happy, or I hope we're reasonably happy, on the data collection. Just to recap on that, please, um, they must say in reasonable detail what they did, where they were, what sampling equipment they used, for how long. They must explain why it actually um, helps them to answer the task question, why that is relevant data. They should not be evaluating it. So if I move on. Data presentation. This is still for 2013. A range of well-constructed data presentation methods, preferably, please. Um, and I a range means not bar graphs by default. So I'm afraid we do count the pictograms as another form of bar graph. It has to be something a bit more than that. And not lots of pie charts. I think we had 22 pages this year of pie charts from some centres. Uh, so please, not that. Uh, they must be appropriate. Line graphs, I'm just going to spend a moment on those. Line graphs are not always properly used. And line graphs should only be used when time is a variable. So, um, so if you 
actually are using that in the wrong place, we would not be counting that, or your, can, your students wouldn't really be having that as an accepted appropriate method. For line graphs, where time is a variable, please, right now sophisticated. And I hope this is going to tie up what you have been told before, whether it was me or somebody else. I know it was high up what I've told you. Um, annotated field sketches. Annotated, not labeled, please. And or sketch maps. Um, located graphs on maps. Right, um, with located graphs on maps, they only count once the sophisticated methods. So, for example, if your students produced a graph, a bar graph, or a series of bar graphs located on a map, that is one sophisticated method. If they then use the same map, but use some different data and put pie charts, that is still the same method. They're locating graphs on a base map. So I'm afraid that isn't two sophisticated methods. It's the same one, a different graph type. So we're looking for a little bit of variety here. Uh, kite diagrams, it's a great one if you're doing beaches, things such as that. Um, more complex scatter graphs, not please the scatter graph where there are just four little points on it. It doesn't need to be something where they've collected a fair amount of information and can, but doesn't have to, include a line of best fit. Annotated photographs, they're great as well. And a sophisticated method of data presentation can include an annotated map from the introduction. So going back when you're actually getting them to establish where they collect, where they intend to collect their data, if they produce a well annotated sketch map, I saw somebody had asked me about hand drawn sketch maps, or taken something from GIS that actually annotated it, or an aerial photograph, or even a satellite photograph, that actually can count as one sophisticated method, even if it's not in what we would call the method section. So again, it's looking through the whole document. Um, a very important point, and then I'll come back and um, use questions um, in a moment. Data presentation must be the student's own work. And increasingly, we're finding from centers that we're getting 10 pieces of work for moderation. And those 10 pieces of work all have exactly the same graphs in them. And sometimes those are computer generated. Uh, I think that's losing some of the um, values of the controlled assessment. It could be that 10 candidates have all had exactly the same idea. But it could be that one person's produced it and shared it out. Uh, we are not penalizing at the moment on that, but we are looking for something which is clearly the students, not a bar graph in the same color 10 times. Um, so that's something which is causing a slight bit of concern. OK. Um, so what I'm going to uh, say is, can it be a sketch map? Yes, it can be a sketch map. Um, you do not, your candidates do not have to uh, use or survey maps or something from Google Earth, they can draw a sketch map. Um, Jennifer, if I just look at those, no, I've done that one. Uh, I only want sub-questions. Um, they won't be penalized if they've used the term hypothesis, that's fine. Uh, Jennifer, I'm not quite sure what your question was, Jennifer. Can we see questions or well, I don't have anything else? Oh. Or my students. Oh, work. I'll do 2004 in a moment, if I may. Um, right, so planning, so the control, they may carry out their planning and data collection not being directly supervised by the teacher. For example, in a library at home, I agree with you that is the case for 2013. Um, we are under advice that that has changed for 2014. So, yes, Julia, I accept that. Um, that is 2013. I would ask, perhaps this year, getting yourselves ready 
for 2014 that perhaps a lot of it, if possible, could be done in front of you. Um, I'll come to the 2014 in a minute. And Paddy, pictograms. Um, I would rather count them because they are, in essence, I'm afraid, a bar graph by another name. Sorry about that. Uh, John, yes, you do get an individual centre report. Right? Yeah, definitely. Um, how many techniques make up a number? For 2014, sorry, 2013, we're probably looking at five or six, three of which should be sophisticated. And I'll explain that to get to the top level. It will change for 14. Right, Laura, um, your students who produce combination graphs for pedestrian and traffic counts, obviously they're pretty much the same as the data collected was similar. Uh, we all went on the same day. Is this an issue? Um, it shouldn't be. As long as they've got three sophisticated techniques, Laura, that should be all right. Um, uh, can I do the 2014 in a minute? Uh, yeah, computer, Barry, computer generated graphs are absolutely fine. What I don't, what I'm saying is that they should be the candidate's own work, not something which one person appears to have formed and everybody else has a copy of. Um, so your question, how many simple and how many complex techniques to reach full marks? I'm never going to completely say this will get full marks because it obviously depends on the level of construction as well as the um, actual data being presented. But as a guideline to get to the top, to get into that top level mark band, there should be, say, three relatively basic or simple techniques. You might have your bar graph, a labeled map, um, and perhaps a simple flow, no, flow chart would be counted a bit more. Perhaps um, another relatively simple method. And then if you have three sophisticated techniques, such as an annotated field sketch, um, a well-constructed scattered graph, and a located series of photographs around a map, preferably with um, annotations on them, that will give you the top level. Um, right, to go to annotations over labeling. A label would be something, I'll take the coast theme because that seems to be a popular one that you're going to be looking at. So if you had a label, steep beach, that would be a label. If you had an annotation, it would be a, spe a steep beach due to the fact that the pebbles, etc., have been piled up at this angle because the waves I counted on the day were predominantly destructive waves. So in general, it almost has a little bit of explanation for the feature that you're observing. It's beyond just a simple, a simple label. Um, I will try. Um, I will I'm absolutely hopeless, John, at telling you how to get the individual reports. Um, if you could email John Walton on that one, um, uh, he will actually tell you. Uh, just a thought when you said about the grants being similar. Um, yeah, it's, Laura, I'm not quite sure what you want me to answer there. Sorry, if you could let me know again. Um, our gradient graphs. I've lost you. Our gradient graphs, um, line graphs. Graded graph isn't drawn, isn't a line graph. Um, so what I really think if you're doing a gradient graph, so you're doing actually the profile of the beach, that should be drawn to scale with the correct angles. And that's really for me, isn't a line graph. So a line graph is different. It's when it's used for time. Um, the messages has disappeared. I don't know. That's obviously because we've got so many coming through. Um, right. Can I? I'll promise I will do all the 14 for you. Um, 
with hand drawn graphs, I've lost this one, this was uh, here we are, amber, with hand drawn locality graphs in the GIS computer generator graph, be capitals one or two specs. A hand drawn located graph and a GIS computer generated graph, I'm afraid it's gonna, I'm going to count as one because you're locating a graph. Sorry about that. You need to be, have something a bit more than that to get your two. So the techniques to make a number I think I've answered. Um, I'm looking for the 2014 and I promise I'll do the 2000, 2013 soon. Um, with a double axis graph, count as a sophisticated technique. Are you thinking, I mean, I'm thinking scatter graphs, that's a double axis. Obviously, a popular, um, something like a triangular graph, I would count as a sophisticated technique if you were using that. Not quite sure what else you're thinking there. I, if you'd like to let me know, or I'll try and answer that for you. Um, uh, but a computer graph. It's more complicated to produce. I'm sorry, I'm still only counting it as one amber. If it's located on a map, it's still one <laughs> sorry, sophisticated technique. Apologies, but that's the rule. I can't, I'm not retracting on that one. Okay, lots of questions. Right, data presentation. If I could have the data presentation layout then, please, Jordan, um, and the mark scheme. Back to data presentation, back to our rather lengthy candidates piece of work. Um, I think you could probably work out what the candidate has got. So this time I won't tell you, because I think you're going to know anyway. Uh, could you please decide what you think, bearing in mind that there might be data presentation outside the outside the box a little bit, uh, what you think this is worth? Do you think it's going to be the mark awarded? It probably might be maximum marks, as you possibly know or possibly think it could be with this one. Thank you. So if I give you a couple of minutes to think about that. In fact, I'll be honest with you, it isn't quite maximum marks. Does that help? Not quite maximum marks. It's 10, a moderation. Thank you, Jordan. So you've all got control of the document and the mark scheme again. Thank you, Julia. I think that's a very, very perceptive comment. I totally agree with you. Agree, Danielle. 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 Sorry. If you're putting a no and you're typing as well, um, be very grateful. It's ten. Remember, we're moderating, so we're trying to agree with the centre, um, if possible. Uh, could you just let me know the person who said no? Why you think it isn't that? Um, yes, data refined in the table, Jeff. That is state, that is standard. It's a basic well, it's a standard technique. That's fine. Sometimes it's all we get data tables. So that at least gets them into the bottom mark range. I agree, Salima, um, but we're moving ahead here a little bit. Um, to possibly the analysis conclusion section. So, yeah. Hang on, sorry. Okay, so going back to what you said, was that for the 2014? Ah. Okay, Julia, I've got some notes on that. I'll check that for you in just a moment. Apologies, if, if the 2000 is spec, would you mind... Um, have you have did you cut and paste that? Do you still have it? Could you put if you do? Could you put it back up again? It's if it's definitely from the 2014. I've got to go with it. I don't have the 2014 in front of me. It does sit at home. It shouldn't do. I'll I'll flag that up because that was clearly not going to happen, Julia. For the moment, we have to totally go with what's published, and I suspect we'll have to go with what's published. Anyway, so yes, back to being at home. I will flag that up tomorrow morning because that sh wasn't, um, I had a meeting on this on Thursday. That wasn't what I understood had been put in the specification. Um, that's been oversight on our part. We go what's been published. Can I check that, please? Uh, Barry, 
It's only some evidence that they've collected data, really. Um, it's quite nice to see that the data is relevant. If the data is clearly relevant from the graphs, that's absolutely fine. But Graham, you want one more sophisticated technique. Thank you. They've got three. Um, I think it's OK. Thank you, Julia. As I say, I will go. The photos need a more label than annotated and not enough range of techniques. Thank you, Sandra and Amber. So what about the students starting now? Well, if that's come from the 2014, Julia, we've got to go with it. Surprised you didn't get 11. Thank you. So we've got a couple of people wanted to put it down slightly. A couple of people thinking it should go up to 11. Yeah, it's a bit of a go through. Thanks a lot, Julia. I'm sorry about that. It's um, not good. OK, we're pretty well there. If we have a couple more people just finishing off on the data presentation, please. Because I will try and justify why the um, center's marks can, were ab absolutely stuck with. Um, yeah, I will indeed try and do this for you, Amber. I think it's pretty good for a 15-year-old as well, actually, Laura. Thank you. Uh, so I'm up to 17 people. I just get the last couple of people in. Please, if you could decide whether it's worth 10, 11. Whether it, remember, you're moderating, so... Are you prepared to go with the center's marks? A few people not. So a few people might want to give it 11. A few people might want to give it 9. I hope nobody wants to give it 0. Right, I'm just going to let you finish typing, Julia, and then I'm going to start talking. So I know Julia's got something to tell us, and then we'll try and justify why we didn't change it. Yeah. Um, right, Jordan, if you could broadcast the results, because I think we're pretty well there. Thank you. Thank you. So we've got a consensus of 70-30. I don't know if everybody quite got their apologies. Um, yeah. Uh, Julia, you're correct. Um, a moderator would not change by one mark. So 10 rather than 9, even if you think it's 9 would be the option, you are right. Um, normally at moderation, we would be looking, unless there is clear evidence otherwise, to agree with the center's marks. We are not there to be nasty to you. We are there to help you and your candidates as much as we possibly can. Bearing in mind that we are mark marking, or we're moderating rather, to nationally agreed standards, and therefore we've got to ensure that there is some sound um, link, conformability, between each centre. So it's no good us agreeing if your marking is totally different from everybody else's in the country. Uh, but we don't penalise, we don't go in to be nasty and change your marks. Please don't think we do. OK, so methods of presenting data. We've got location maps on page 5. There actually is an annotated graph on page 6, a satellite photograph on page 6, a large number of tables, for example, on page 12, lots of basic graphs, for example, on page 38, scatter graphs on page 35, annotated question mark photographs on page 57, maps to show a range of factors linked to the task question, such as environmental quality on page 45. So therefore, definitely a wide range of techniques. In most cases, the techniques are well presented. They've got titles. They've got labels. They've got graph axes, for example. The exception to this is the lack of scale on the environmental quality and other ward maps. They haven't got those. It could have been worked out by the student, for example, from an ordnance survey map or road map of the area. So a bit of an oversight there. But they've got nearly everything, so you wouldn't be penalizing. So there's another little note as well. They've titled their maps as choropleth maps 
And although they're very effective in showing spatial distribution of environmental quality, they're not actually technically correctly choropleth maps. But again, you're not going to penalize them in moderation for that, for that lack of detail. So the work is sufficient quality and range for the student to meet. Mark range three, a wide range of present techniques, some of which are well presented. There are so mark range two, some of which are well presented. The annotated photographs are, are enough about environmental quality between the roads and areas, the scatter graphs, etc. So, um, having decided that, we kept it at level three at moderation, and we went with the choice of data presentation to give it the ten. Um, could have been a nine, as some people have said. I think eight might have been a bit hard. So if I'm marking and I'm between nine and ten, I'd be better to go ten, Graham. Oh, if you can, it's the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. To be honest with you, I actually, if you think it's worth nine and a half, to be fair to them, I would I would give them the higher the benefit of the doubt. Um, and this is what we intend, well, we, we do it, as I say, at moderation. We say, all right, that might be a tiny bit higher than we'd like to see, it, but it's in the correct level. We will probably accept that. <laughs> if it's nine and a half, yes. If it's nine, no. <laughs> OK, thank you, Graham. And thank you, everyone. So um, I think we've got a few no's. Some think it's too good, might give us 11, some thought maybe 9. But yeah, it's definitely a pretty decent piece of work. Right, Jordan, thank you very much. If we could go back to the PowerPoint, please. Right, so if we move on. Right now, this obviously the analysis and conclusions must be under a high level of control. Test conditions, without access to new reference material, teacher advice. So this is where you can't walk around and say, have you, if, have you done this? And preferably without writing frames, which are creeping in just a little bit at the moment. Um, and class discussions. So obviously, you can't have them sitting in groups, working out their analysis together. This is, this is their own work. Um, right, so obtain the highest marks, they've got to extract data and provide detailed analytical comments. So some reasoning behind the data sets or the data variations that they spot. They must also make links between the data sets. So if um, they've done river measurements, for example, they should see a correlation between velocity and the roundness of the bed load. Um, Etc. Uh, and they can here refer to any theories or models that they've used in the purpose of the investigation. If they use a model, technically it's worthless unless they use it elsewhere within their study. So here's another position and place where they could actually make valid use of something. So for example, if you're doing rivers and you've mentioned and talked about Bradshaw's model to them, it could be a good place for them. Um, to come back to return to that model in their analysis conclusion. In fact, I would suggest they definitely did if you talked about that with them. Obviously, there are not models available for every particular aspect. So the sort of thing we might be looking for, um, got some west side of the beach, the pebbles closest to sea one average, more than double the size. So we've got some extraction of data. Um, the size of the pebbles closest to the sea on the east side. So now this leads me to believe that the type of erosion, such as attrition, decreases the size of pebbles nearest to the sea. It doesn't have to be right. Actually, this was. It's a very um, different way. It's a longshore drift coming in. It's a different way in this, this particular example. As the pebbles were carried along by longshore drift, they'd been thrown against each other. Therefore, by the time they were deposited on the east side of the beach, they would have been considerably smaller. So the candidate has returned to some reasoning, some analytical comments to help explain what they've seen. OK, so quite a nice sort of answer. So bearing in mind that they need to extract data, they need to make clear analytical comments to actually explain the data, 
they need to draw together their, um, their sets of data and make substantiated, in other words, supported conclusions to get up to the top level on this particular aspect, um, I will ask you and ask Jordan to have a look again, our worthy lady or gentleman, I don't know what it is, um, who wrote this particular piece of controlled assessment, um, I would ask you to have a look at the um, analysis and conclusions section and to decide what you think of the moderators, or in this case, the teachers, Mark. So, Jordan, if we could possibly have the um, the analysis and conclusions section and the mark scheme up, please. And um, maximum marks available for the uh, this section would be nine. In this particular instance, just to help you, uh, this didn't quite reach the full marks. Um, this is sitting quite nicely in mark band two in mark band two, so can you tell this time, rather than, I'm not going to give you the actual mark for a moment, whether you think it should be in mark band two or not, or whether the moderator and the actual centre itself, because this is the mark for centre set, were being a little harsh. Thank you. So we're looking somewhere in the second mark range here, just to remind you. Yeah, I agree, Julia. I think they collected a bit too much data, which is something worth thinking about, isn't it? It's a bit of a lesson. Agreed, Danielle and Julia again. And they have linked to the Burgess model. Agreed. Graham, I agree with you as well. <laughs> Pazzi, I love your comment. I think, I don't know, 20 hours is an awful long time when you're 15 or 16. Thank you, Graham. If you haven't decided, round up, Graham. <laughs> I agree with you, Julia. Aren't we all, by the time we've got through this and we've marked it all as well? Yeah, we're calling it test conditions, Julia, but I suppose there's not that. Well, there's, there's, there's fractional differences. I am the quietest place. <laughs> Give it five. No, they can't, Julia. But they can do a few things, new spec. Mind you, the old spec, they can do a few things. They can they can use word check and things such as that, which is not quite the same as um, as and dictionaries, which isn't quite the same as um, as exact strict exam conditions. So it's not. And the teacher can give general advice, but not specific advice. Paddy, six out of seven. Is that six or a seven? Paddy, you're going for you're rounding up. You're going to put them in the next level, aren't you? Lacking clarity. We're pretty well there. Um, if I could just have a few more yeses and noes, because I can talk this through, because I do want to have some time on the 2014 as well. Excellent description of data. Fives. So we're pretty sure it's a five or a six. Paddy's been sitting there, can't decide whether to give it a five or a six. Round five. Sandra, thank you. Agree with Paddy, the students fed up. Zero to too much. No, this is a model of what not to do. Barry, thank you. Absolutely. Don't be confused. This is way over the top. And with the word new new word limit coming in, obviously, hopefully this won't be happening anymore. It wasn't happening. The first couple of um, controlled assessment series we ran through, everything was brief, concise, and then it started to creep back to the old dreaded coursework, and we don't want that, thank you. You don't want it because it takes hours of your time. We don't want it because it takes ages. Right, sorry about that, Amber. Um, I wanted to show you one that was far too... Well, I actually thought it was quite useful to show you one that um, 
actually achieved a very high mark so that you could say, okay, they've got far too much of that, um, but uh, an A, B, next time, I promise. We have rights. You kept back to it because your moderator pulled you down. More recent longer work has been back to expected grades. Oh, my apologies on that, Amber. I don't do that. Um, it shouldn't have been for the length. Let me, that's the only thing I can say. I can't comment any more, obviously, at this point on that. Right, okay, I'm going to, if I may, I know one or two of you are still moving on, but I'm going to tell you that the centre gave it six, so consequently your fives were certainly pretty well there, weren't they, Ham? And really, they do include, one point to note is that they do include some anal analysis in the methodology tables on pages 8 to 12. And that's perfectly okay, but it's a bit like the evaluation. That has to be carried out under high level of control. So there was some looking back. There's considerable evidence, again, yeah, certainly that, that the data has been extracted and described. For example, on page 53, it highlights that in both the negative externality, it, which, which in most streets has litter, 30 4% in St. Margaret's Ward and 12% in Stoke Park. So there's extraction of data. The candidate's able to draw conclusions based on the evidence, as shown on page 53. We found that while two wards have slightly different types of negative externalities, they love this word, don't they? Overall, they had a similar total. Consequently, there is good evidence that the student achieves the criteria to be awarded at least mark range one. They actually describe the, detail in de uh, the data in detail, so there's masses of this. Examples on page 51, 55, 56, 58, they made sure they described it in detail. However, their analytical comments are a little bit weak. So you get observations such as those with higher wages, often professionals, tend to choose to leave, live in areas of high environmental quality, but not really hugely more development maps. They definitely get to mark range two here. Um, they refer to their relevant mini sub-questions and they actually draw overall conclusions on page 62, which are really plausible and do reflect the evidence obtained. Therefore, we found that the environmental quality differs between the two wards or urban areas due to the age of housing, the distance from the CBD and the level of access to green spaces. So they awarded mark range for criteria. However, the lack of detailed analytical comments means that the work didn't meet the requirements for mark range three and therefore was held as the centre had held it at six. I know one or two of you thought that was marginally, um, marginally um, generous. Uh, OK. Oh, I'm sorry about this. Some of you are disappearing. Um, yeah, I, I get to see some of your points. Um, Right, I'm sorry, I can't comment on paper three at all, obviously, as you, you must understand. Um, our school geography subject is most coursework, and therefore the students get, pupils get stressed out about it. Don't I know it? I'm doing it with mine at the moment. And they can say, but we only have to do two hours on history. Um, thank you, uh, Salima. I'm sorry you've had to go and miss the evaluation. Uh, Sorry, the, the new model, the new spec won't change things much. I can't help you with that. Sorted, you're going to go and teach. Oh, that's awful. Right. Oh, sorry, you're off. Um, I, can't, I can't talk about grade boundaries. and That's not my remit. So if you have a query on that, if you could go to the appropriate thing to John Walton, please. That's um, somebody to talk on that. When Bermuda, it's a time difference. Oh, well... I do enjoy your teaching. I'm not so sorry for you now you're in Bermuda. We've got horrible grey rain. I bet you haven't. OK. Right, so the type of analytical comment that we would be looking for to reach the higher level. Really much more in-depth explanation. Why are we really seeing those patterns? So um, it would be very useful. So they, they just give 
there's more green space, but they don't really go on and say how that's really effective in the um, in the changes of environmental quality and hence the difference between the two wards. It's not really very well developed. So it's really the strength of their arguments, their explanation there that's lacking. Does that help, John? Right. I want to do evaluations because they're problems. So. Um, if we could have, please, the um, evaluation or the PowerPoint back so that I can just quickly just flick through. And I'll come back if there's any other questions, but I do want to do a bit on 2014. So, evaluations. Bit of a problem sometimes. Evaluations under high level of control. Right, now then, this is critical. Uh, to get that mark high, mark range, please, they must do all their parts of their work. The data collection which they do quite often in the tables, the data presentation, which is quite frequently not evaluated, and their overall study. They've got to really look at all three sections. Um, they might reflect on how effectively they answered the main task question and their sub-questions as part of this process. So this is somewhere where we're still seeing high marks where they've only actually evaluated their data, present, uh, their data collection, and that's a little bit of a worry still. So, an example of something which could be a high-level answer for the overall study, um, the first thing I would change, it's not just about the data collection, um, the first thing I would change is how many people were asked, as our data may have been biased. We only asked 34 people who do best to have interviewed 100. We should have asked to try to have asked, they haven't explained why, by the way, we should have also tried to ask a greater variety of people, a lot of people of the same coach trip, or therefore they might not have been typical of people visiting bonus. I think this larger number and range of people would have made my work fairer and my conclusions more reliable. So they're touching on it, aren't they? They haven't really said a little bit of detail why it would have made their work fairer and their conclusions more reliable, but they're certainly starting to question not just their data collection methods, but exactly whether their conclusions that they reached based on those methods can be substantiated. If I move on. So, if we, um, if we go on to looking at evaluation for this particular candidate, because I want to fly through this a bit quickly. So, if I could have the evaluation section up for the other piece of work in the MART scheme. Um, for this, because we, I don't want to spend too long, sorry, we're, time is running away with me slightly here. Um, this was given six, so if you could really skim, imagine that you've got 60, mark, 60 te um, exercise books to mark and it's about to be the bell, basically. <laughs> uh, if you could just skim through and decide whether you think it's worth that or not, and I'll briefly explain to you why um, we kept, why the uh, centre and the moderator kept it at six. Thank you. So, afraid we need to be a bit quicker. Yeah, thank you, Jordan. I, I know that, but I wanted to talk about the 2014 because I know one person specifically is here for the 2014 to make sure that they have a bit of understanding uh, before they go away on that. Yeah, we're agreeing with six, please. Um, which is what the center and the moderator left at six. So center mark. So top of level, mark range two. And as soon as I've got roughly half, which is going to be about 10 votes, I'll talk it through. But I'll start. <laughs> Love it. Um, yeah, all right. OK, Paddy, now that is so. I'm so glad you're here. Yes, they are supposed to evaluate the data presentation. Um, yes, Graham, if it's, as long as it gives them enough detail, that is absolutely fine. Tails off after data collection, agreed, Amber. There is incompleteness. Thank you, Fiona. It's rather brief. Expect a bit more detail for six months. Probably Jane, but we don't get a lot of detail. So we went with, remember, we're 
we're going with the centre if we can, and I'll justify it in a minute. Six high, three level two, not in great detail. Uh, it's not, Barry. Um, if you look at the, it's not, it's, it's not as a separate entity, but it does say um, aspects of the investigation, aspects of the investigation are the data collection because they've done a, a certain amount of evaluation of the, um, of the uh, actual task questions by justifying them in the first section. So we don't count that bit. So it's data collection, data presentation, and the analysis conclusion, the validity of the study, basically. So that's aspects of the, um, of the, uh, of the overall study. Um, as far as we are concerned. You can get six, you'll not moan about this. <laughs> you can give it around five, max of five, okay. A swatch. Um, I don't see any reason why not. And it might be something, uh, Danielle, it's probably possibly a really good idea um, when the word limit comes in use that. Um, I'm sorry, Barry. I can't comment on what's been said in previous training. Um, I know what I've said in training, which is what I'm saying to you. Right. So I've just got people thinking five-ish. Uh, I would ask John Walton on that one, Barry. Right, so um, if I run through this then, um, the evaluation is mainly on page 63 and 64. They do reflect on the effectiveness of the data collection and how this might impact on the results. Our data for access to green space may have not been fair or accurate. Some houses on the edge of its which far from parks are bordered by fields. Therefore, our correlation and conclusions may not be correct. They also, they also consider the limitations of the evidence collected, and therefore they go past mark range one. However, the evaluation varies in completeness between the aspects of the controlled assessment, data collection, data presentation, analysis and conclusions, with only a very brief mention of data presentations on page 64, and without consideration of the validity of the conclusions drawn. So they don't really think about overall the limitations of the evidence. Therefore, is their, is their work valid? The candidate, therefore, doesn't meet mark range 3, but provides sufficient detail for the candidate to get to the upper end of mark range 3 two where we've put them, um, send to put them at six, five would have been legitimate, I think, as well. Okay, so, um, Amber, and Barry, I accept that I, I have to, afraid I all have to accept that I cannot comment on what you've just said. Um, Jennifer, thank you. Nice to have had you there. Um, and Julia, thank you. Uh, right, the data presentation. All right, and Barry, you're getting locked in. Don't do that, please. So thank you very much. Um, I'm, I can't comment on anything that you've, you've had from elsewhere. Uh, Amber, I can't comment on that comment either, if you see what I mean. Sorry. Right. Last little section. Planning. Well, I don't think, what are we going to give it? Um, if we could very briefly have up the, um, sorry, I'm the microphone again here. If we could very briefly please have up, Jordan, if I could very briefly have up the, um, the work. Just a quick skim through planning, planning an organisation. Six. Um, I, I don't think. It, well, I'll leave it to you 
to decide, but um, what you think it's worth, but I think it's a reasonable amount here. Centre gave us six to set it up. So, fluent um, geographical words, they make some good attempts to incorporate diagrams into the text with cross referencing and side heading. They use pages. Um, it's logical sequence, it's, it's long, it's wind, uh, overworded and all the rest of it, but it's logical. Um, if you totally disagree and don't want to give it six, if you could just vote now, please, that would be really helpful. I've got 11 people giving it six. Can I think I've read that it's, it's worth it? It's wherever I think of it, um, in terms of its own length, and it is too long, uh, lack of analysis of data presentation, um, but wherever we think of it, there, it, it's probably a worth six for its planning. Right, I've got 13. I am tier section labels to managing grammar good, definitely. I, I would agree. So, more five, but agree as a moderator. Thank you, Graham. That's exactly correct. Moderator will agree with the centre unless there's evidence not to. I would give it six. If it was my candidate, I think their terminology, their, 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 their aptitude for writing is quite clear there. Right, I'm going to whiz this on if you don't mind. Um, could I have the PowerPoint back, please? Thank you, because I know that, I think it's Julia in particular, wanted a few things about the 2014. Right, so, um, done all that. Right, OK. Key changes for 2014, because, say, 10 minutes or so, because I'm sure you've got bursting with questions on this. Um, two key points. Number of task titles have been reduced, and I'm very sorry if your favourite task has gone away, but that's again has happened. Um, the word limit is much more strictly enforced with a small penalty, not a big one, but a small one, um, should they break the word limit. And we are looking for a much more concise pieces of work here. Um, right, so what's changed? Well, Julia might be picking me up on a few other things, but let's see. In the purpose of the investigation, the following have been added. A well-focused statement that identifies and contextualizes the question or issue or the issue or question. So what does that mean? Well, it's really what you've already been doing. Um, you adapt the task question so it forms an appropriate question, or if you have to, a hypothesis at a local scale. For example, choosing a small sketch of coastline. So you actually make it fit the location. So you change around the task question so that it fits the area that you're going to be studying. So you make it you make it for your location. Um, can the task question can be subdivided this time into two or three and very, very occasionally, a lot of you have been doing four sub questions. Probably because of the word limit, you probably won't want to go above two or three sub questions now, um, which is going, is going to be perfectly acceptable. Okay. Um, if we have the um, the uh, chat cleared, because I think we might be getting some questions on the 2014, which I can try and scoot through as we do it, that would be very happy. Very good if you um, don't mind, please, Jordan. So, thank you. Um, secondary data must be included. It doesn't have to be realms of secondary data. For example, it can be some figures from a national park website if you're doing tourism. It does not have to be whole big chunks of information. All you're doing is making sure that they are using methods to collect both primary and secondary. And I suspect the secondary, in 99% of cases, are going to be um, data which is going to be taken from the internet. Um, now, this is where, it, again, uh, there should be explanations of the methods used to collect primary and data, secondary data. So, a very brief explanation of how they collected the secondary data. I'm not quite sure what they can say here beyond I use the internet or I used a Google search engine, which obviously ties up a little bit with the use of ICT anyway. Um, the contribution um, 
to each of each candidate, each student, to the primary data collection must be described. So they've actually got to show some evidence that they were involved in the data collection personally. One way I've suggested here is that um, this could be achieved is perhaps a photograph of them collecting the data with annotations. This is what I was doing here. You know, them standing in the river with their flow meter, for example, and they could annotate that up. Um, at this location, this is what I was doing, and that's not using up too many of those valuable words. Um, going on then, a risk assessment uh, explicitly linked to the investigation should be included, and again, we don't want too many words, because obviously we're working under quite a limit here. So this might be um, a simple table. Here's what I, the perceived risk, so drowning. It's a bit about what we did to prevent drowning. Alternatively, an annotated photograph or a map uh, could be used for this. Um, and again, you think, if you're thinking about it, if you're doing that, you're actually covering another issue, which would be annotations on a map or photograph, which could be a, which done properly would be a sophisticated data presentation method. It should be very really concise. So, the secret here is getting everything down to tables, words annotated photographs, sketches, so that you're not using up, or they're not using up, lots of valuable words. Um, I'm going to go on and uh, continue. There are no changes to the methods of data presentation. So what I've already said about um, having sophisticated methods, etc., still counts. However, accepted that they won't have so much data. Probably about five data presentations for 2014 will constitute a range, three of which should be sophisticated. So that's a guideline. It's not an absolute, but it's a guideline. Obviously, it will depend on what's selected. Um, no changes to the analysis and conclusion. That is the same. And the evaluation, no changes. So please, it's those three sections, can be in a table, again, that they need to evaluate. A SWOT, a table. Right, so planning. Um, students must be within the word limit to achieve the highest level. So how can this be achieved? Well, the criterion is very, very focused on the task question. Annotating photographs for the risk assessment, as I said, using tables, <laughs> my dreaded tables, but back to them for the data collection methods. Um, Ed Excel will actually be producing a support document, an exemplar to help with this aspect. And I'm sorry if you're all underway with that already, but um, there is information coming out. And I've been asked to tell you as well that the um, Edexcel book is being updated, and that will be the um, available in 2000. Sorry, in December of this year, um, to fit with the new specification. So, presumably, that means the eradication of glaciation and countryside, and a detail of some of the other information which you might need slightly different aspects of, um, and that other books are also, I believe. Um, been updated as well. Okay, I know we're busily running out of time. So, are there any pressing questions that I can answer on the 2014 um, specification for you? I know it's a bit of a gallop at the end there. But is there anything there? I can't see anything coming up. Oh, yes, I can. Uh, where am I supposed to be looking? No, we've done that one. Ah. Right. Okay. Um, Julia's asked about the editing work down if to fit the word count in view of the rules about working in the computer, especially at high level. You can work on, they can work on the computer at the high level of control, Julia. There's no reason why they can't. And they can certainly, um, they c I, I don't, they can go, they can do this. All you have to do is make sure that they're not referencing new material or going onto the internet at that point. But I would say we're running out of time. 
Uh, let me just flick to the last slide. Okay, that's the, the end one. So anomalous online evaluation, which has probably been sent to you anyway. Um, is there anything else? Because apologies, it's two minutes left. Uh, right, so I don't really need anything again, Jordan. It was only if anybody has a last pressing question that they wanted to ask me, really. Um, thank you. So if we could give them a chance to type something. And I'm not sure what's old and what's new now. I'm getting a bit lost. There's a lot showing. So I can't see any questions coming up. But am I assuming that you're all very happy and I've answered everything? I'm sure I haven't. Um, oh, what can be done at home in the 2014? Well, according to the information that we were given, and this needs me to check it, they can still do some of the first three sections at home away from the direct supervision of the teacher. I, I understood that would have been changed. And I, I can't give you a definitive answer on that. If it says that in the 2000 and spec, then the we, so 2014 spec, we have to go with that. If we handwrite, are we seriously expected to count? I'm sorry, yes, the answer to that. I can't, Patty, I'm ever so sorry. I, I can't do the USM conversions for you. Um, will words count in 2014 in the table? Yes, please. Will the risk assessment in a table contribute to the word count? Yes. Sorry. Um, I can't clarify what be done at home any more than I tried to. I'm sorry. Uh, right. Words of storage of work are horrific, aren't they? Just mine are all on a memory stick, which I take in at the end of each lesson, if that's any help. Um, right. Double axis graph. I'll just take that one because I know Kate asked that ages ago. Uh, yeah, I mean, I count that. Yes, okay, thank you. I think we're only out of time. Um, if they count, what is the purpose of including tables? I'm sorry, they count. I can't, I can't do anything about that, not my regulations. So we count tables as within the word limit. But you can cut things down, and I really think... My apologies, everyone. We are coming to an end here. So I don't know if um, if Jordan needs to come in and actually say anything at the end, or I just say a big, big thank you. I do hope you found it useful. Apologies for the fact we've galloped through at the end here a little bit. Um, I've really enjoyed talking to you, and I do hope, as I said before, that I've been of some use, and to wish you and your candidates, your students, the very best of luck with anything that's coming up in the future and I hope that you can survive your hours in the classroom with them doing the controlled assessment. Thank you very much and goodbye everybody.